good afternoon to all we are going to start our chapter 15 that is uh, introduction to heat transfer so from today onwards uh, we'll start our class on heat transfer okay uh, so i think all of you are aware of it, how the heat being transferred from one place to another place from one object to another object uh, it's mainly related to the second law of thermodynamics if there are uh, temperature difference between two interfaces or two uh, uh, you know like uh, <clears throat> in two, two different locations then heat will flow from uh, high to hot, i mean from hot to cold zone right and it can transfer heat can transfer through solids liquid gas even in vacuum whereas mass transfer if you know it's the net movement of mass from one location to another it's generally happens during uh, stream uh, some phase or from region of high concentration to low concentration. So it's a similar concept, heat transfer and mass transfer. There must be some uh, heat flask associated with it so that uh, uh, that heat can transfer from a high hot zone to cold zone due to the temperature difference, right? So let us look into uh, the basics of heat transfer. I think uh, all of you are aware that there are three different mode of heat transfer, mainly conduction, convection, and radiation. Uh, what is happened during conduction that uh, generally the energetic particles uh, <coughs> transfer the heat energy from uh, the, the transfer the heat energy to the adjacent less energetic particle, right? So how it does it happen? Like I can show you, like you're you're boiling some water uh, on a on a heating coil. So what happens that uh, the water get uh, the the, the water get hot, right? Due to the uh, the convection, right? Because the there is a, some sort of uh, water, the hot water coming from bottom going to top, and then uh, the cold water from top going to the bottom due to the con due to the convection. But whereas the handles, as you can see, the heat is being transferred by conduction, and the 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 coil which upon which you are doing the heat, um, heating actually radiates you. So it's the radiation mechanism. So you can see that all the three mechanisms are being involved. Now coming to the conductions. It's a combination of vibration of the molecules. So it's known as phonons. Okay, the solid particle contain a lot of uh, small uh, atomic or molecules which actually vibrate due to the heat energy. So that is called phonons. This is a combination of vibration of the molecule and the free electrons, which are actually available in solid or in the metallic solid, which in, which are being transferred. Similarly, in gases and liquid, the conduction mainly happens due to the collision and diffusion of molecules during random motion. As you can see. The conduction in a liquid or in a <coughs> gas, it mainly happens to collision and diffusion. So, how does it uh, the the rate of heat conduction from uh, hot surface to the cold surface is actually is proportional to the temperature difference, right? If I if I have to write the expression for heat transfer uh, rate of heat transfer by conduction, rate of heat conduction, as you can see, the equation is very straightforward. It's the rate of heat conduction is proportional to the temperature difference time area divided by thickness, which is actually Fourier's first law, right? So if you remember that, if you put into the expression, then what happens, the rate of heat conduction is given by Q dot conduction, is actually area is A, temperature difference, we are considering the temperature of hot and cold surfaces T1 and T2, so it will be T1 minus T2 divided by the thickness, which is given del X. So you, you can write in the differential form Q equal to minus Ka del T by del X. Now, how does this K is coming? Because the equation, as you can see, is the rate of heat conduction is proportional to the area times temperature difference divided by thickness. The proportionality constant is given by K, which is nothing but the thermal conductivity, a measure of the ability of a material to conduct heat. If a material is having high thermal conductivity, it will dissipate heat faster, whereas the material which are having very low thermal conductivity is a good insulator to, good insulator to heat, which, which cannot transfer heat quickly. Now here, del T by del X is actually known as temperature gradient, and uh, Q is known as rate of heat conduction, which is sometimes given by Q by A. If you bring the A this side, that is called heat flux. Q by A, which is sometimes given by small Q, is known as heat flux. So let us move forwards, and you can see if I review the thermal conductivity value of defined material as what you can see that as you gradually go down from top to bottom. The thermal conductivity decreases. So you can see that diamond or copper, which are having very high thermal conductivity, but styrofoam air, which are having very low or poor thermal conductivity. So what does it mean that 
we said actually good conductor of heat, copper, aluminum, diamond, okay. But ceramic material, which are actually break glass, are very poor conductor. And that is the reason they are actually being used insulating material, okay. If they are used as an insulating material. Here, here, styrofoam, these are actually highly insulating material. And that is why you should have some sort of air gap hmm, to prevent heat loss. Huh? The furnace, if you remember the furnace wall, there is some sort of air gaps deliberately been kept so the heat loss can be minimized. Okay, and that's why it is being also used for insulation, right? So metals are generally good conductors because electron can transfer from hot to cold surface. So let us look into the convections. I think uh, the mode of energy transfer between a solid surface and the adjacent liquid or gas that is in motion. It, there's a motion is there and it involves the combined effect of conduction and fluid motion, right? Hot fluid comes from bottom to top and then the cold fluid from the sides comes to the bottom, right? So what happens? There is a chain type chain reactions happen. The hot fluid, fluid travels to the top and the cold fluid from the surrounding comes to the bottom. So this is happening due to some sort of, of, some sort of fluid motions, right? As you can see, it is given here. The hot, it, it may be a surface of ponds or something. During, uh, during summer times, the hot the surface get hot and then water start evaporating out. So water will go up and then surrounding airs, which are actually colder, relatively colder than the surface, will actually going to fill it, here, fill it up here, right? And that is why you get all kinds of, you know, like depressions, uh, all kinds of depressions which happens in Bay of Bengal or in Arabian seas, it's mainly due to the convections, okay? There is a imbalance to the air flow between the hot and cold surface, which later on give rise to depressions. Uh, <clears throat> natural types of convections can be two types. One is natural convection and force convection. I think all of you know what is force convection is. If you do some sort of, you know, like, like a blower, a fan, a, anything, a, anything we are actually we are trying to push air uh, into the uh, into the system. Okay, actually that is known as force convection. Natural convection, as I just mentioned, the surface of a pond or a river is get hotted up during summer, and then uh, the the moisture which are actually evaporated goes top, and then the cold air from the surrounding comes and fills fill it up. That is kind of a natural convection phenomenon. So after uh, I think uh, we, uh, we have uh, basically deals, we have basically uh, discussed uh, what is uh, conduction and convection. Let us uh, look into the equations, which is known as Newton's law of cooling. I uh, will we'll talk it in later on, okay, during uh, our, uh, uh, as we move forward, we'll, we'll discuss all these equation details, but let us first uh, review this expression, that is the basic law of convection. Here Q convection is actually convective heat. Uh, the heat law is due to convection. H is actually convective heat transfer coefficients, which is having a unit of watt per meter square C. And if you remember that the thermal conductivity at a unit of watt per meter C. So that is the difference between the thermal conductivity and the convective heat transfer coefficient in terms of unit. AS is here actually the, the surface area through which convection happens. So if you have a large surface area, the convective heat transfer loss will be higher because Q is directly proportional to H into AS. Okay. Ts is the surface temperature and T infinity is the temperature of the fluid sufficiently far from the surface. Sometimes it is taken as the ambient temperature, okay? Because far, far away from the surface actually the ambient temperature. Now uh, let us look into the radiation. It is uh, the energy emitted by matter in the form of electromagnetic waves. It's mainly the photons, right? Sunlight coming from uh, all the way to, from sun to the sur earth surface. That is actually uh, photonic energy, right? That is photonic sun is actually photonic energy, that is radiations. So unlike conduction and convection, the transfer of heat by radiation does not require the presence of any intervening media. Because if you remember correctly, the conduction and convection, you need some sort of media. Like, like, like when you're heating a water, that uh, the conduction happens through the, the handle, right? So there's some solid particle. During, during convection, the water is being involved, right? The surface of uh, pond is getting hotter down. But Unlike uh, conduction and convection, the radiative heat transfer does not require any intervening medium. And also heat transfer by radiation is fastest among all the uh, heat transfer mechanism being involved. And it also suffered no attenuation in vacuum. What does that mean? That's in vacuum, there is no reduction into the total amount of heat flux due to radiation. Okay. And uh, if you remember, I think uh, the equations, all of you know from your uh, basic uh, physics knowledge that uh, for the black body radiations, the absorption of Stephen Boltzmann's law is mainly been uh, applied for heat conduct, uh, radiative 
heat transfer, which is nothing but Q emit emission. The radiative emission is actually proportional to sigma a s t g over four. Sigma is actually Stephen Boltzmann's constant, which is given the parameter 5.67 into 10 to the power minus eight watt per meter square Kelvin to the power four. Because radiative heat transfer is directly proportional to the uh, four root of temperature, right? So that's why it is k to the power four. And I'll I'll discuss all this in the later half in the class. Uh, Let's uh, basically look into the fundamental aspects now. So I uh, will consider the one dimensional steady state heat conduction. We're going to start from here. So what you can see here, you can see a cylindrical shape elements or see that cylindrical shape body where uh, the sides are insulated. So this surface is insulated and the end temperature is T1 and T2. OK, so obviously if T1 and T2 are not equal and T1 is greater than T2. So what is going to happen that heat is going to transform from left to right. So the delta is that temperature difference T1 minus T2. As you can see, it is given by arrow. The heat flux is from right to left. Okay, it's yes, left to right. And the length of the cylindrical element is given by delta X. Okay, so the temperature difference caused by this conduction heat transfer in the positive X direction, if you consider this is positive from left to right. Uh, here QX depends on the following variables. QX is the heat, trans heat flux. That is, depends on delta T, the temperature uh, temperature difference, delta K, the rod length, and the A, the cross section area, which is given by heat transfer, convective heat transfer given by proportional to A del T by del X, and the proportionality constant is thermal conductivity here. So QX is equal to del T, del X, and del X using a chain rule difference equation by taking one constant and two variables. So, I mean, what actually it says that the heat flow due to convection, a conduction will be going to, going to be proportional to area and length of the rod and the temperature difference. Okay, that's all being involved. So just to give an example, what will be the value of uh, conduction heat transfer for metals and plastic? Obviously for metal, it will be higher. Sorry, QX would be smaller for the, yes, QX would be smaller for the plastic and then the, then the metal. So metal should be higher. Why? Because if you remember that I already talked about the, the proportionality constant is given by K. But K is a thermal conductivity having an unit of watt per meter Kelvin. Since for metal, the K value is higher, and it's a very important property of the material. So as for metal, it is higher, and for plastic, it is smaller. So obviously, the heat loss due to conduction, it will be higher in the case of metal compared to the plastics, right? It has been actually given. The heat flux is given by this. You can see QX by A. Q double plus Q prime X, that is given by heat flux. So you, Q prime, you can write minus Q X K dt by dx. Don't mix it, Qx and Qx. Actually, Qx, different books having different notation, but always remember heat flux is actually Q prime. And if you give it in by capital Q or Qx, that is actually heat loss due to conduction. That is equally Q into A, small Q prime into A. So why the minus sign is necessary? Because heat is always transferred in the direction of decreasing temperature. So that is why the negative signs comes here. Because you are moving from hot to the colder zone, right? So in positive direction, temperature decreases. One parameter is decreasing in the increase. If another parameter increasing, the distance is increasing. The length of the uh, the x is increasing, but whereas the delta is actually decreasing. That is why it is comes the negative negative signs. Now Fourier's law that Q double by heat flux, direction of heat flow will always be normal to a surface of constant temperature called an isothermal surface. We'll talk about that in, in later half. Okay. Now let's look into the basics difference between thermal conductivity and diffusion. So thermal conductivity is the rate of heat transfer through a unit thickness of the material uh, per unit area per unit temperature difference. We have just rearranged the term. Okay. If you remember that we have rearranged this term, this term actually being rearranged. And uh, rate of heat transfer through a unit thickness of material per unit area per unit temperature difference. It depends on the physical structure of matter, atomic and molecular, uh, <coughs> which is related to the state of the matter. The thermal conductivity of a material is a measure of the ability to conduct heat. I think I already talked about it. As you can see, K is given by L. L is the length of this divided by A, T1 minus T2 into Q. This is being used to determine the, because we know all the parameters, and then you can deter, easily determine the thermal conductivity. This is an electric heater, which are being used to determine thermal conductivity. 
So a, a high value of thermal conductivity indicates that the material is a good heat conductor. I think I already discussed it and I talked about it. And a low value indicator is a poor conductor or it's an insulator, right? You can see that uh, all kinds of uh, thermal conductivity we have given. This is a good source for your reference. If you need to know thermal conductivity in order to solve a numerical, you can al always look into these tables. There are many other uh, materials given with thermal conductivity given in two different units. This is watt per meter C and this is BTU. That is the FES unit. OK, so you can easily look into this. And you can see as glass, uh, all the uh, air, okay, carbon dioxide, all kinds of gaseous subject of course, gaseous materials and ceramic material thermal conductivity is very low. Like given an example, alumina is very poor thermal conductivity. Okay, so in ceramic material, only silicon carbide has very high thermal conductivity. Uh, the mechanism of heat conduction in different phase phases of a substance. Here uh, you can see that uh, the thermal conductivity of gases such as airs vary by, vary by a factor of 10 to the power 4. Those on pure metal such as copper, right? Pure crystals and metals have the highest thermal conductivity and gases and insulating material have been lowest. Like copper, nickel, constant, tan, copper, okay. Aluminium, commercial bone is having very high thermal conductivity, right? Uh, because see, you can given here it says three different materials are given solid, liquid and gas. Mainly uh, thermal conductivity related to that is vibration, which is phononic phonon vibration and flow of free electron, right? Because the metallic structure actually is a crystalline structure. There is no order in the structure. So the heat conduction is very, very fast. Whereas liquid and gas is a disorder structure kind of. So it's mainly happened due to the molecular collision and molecular diffusion. And since it's a disorder structure, the heat loss due to conduction is very low compared to the solids. Thermal diffusivity is actually nothing but the really ratio of thermal conductivity to specific capacity, that is CP, right? And which is uh, important property, and it's a unit is meter square per second. So K by rho CP, uh, that is the alpha. Alpha is actually thermal diffusivity given by K by rho CP. It's the ratio of thermal conductivity, K divided by heat capacity, CP. And uh, it measures of the materials to conduct thermal energy related to its ability to store thermal energy. Okay. So what does it mean when a material have a large and small value of alpha? Or a large alpha will, res will respond quickly to change in the thermal environment. And if its thermal diffusivity is small, it will respond more sluggishly or taking longer to reach a new equilibrium. So thermal diffusivity high means it will immediately reach to the equilibrium, whereas thermal diffusivity small means it will take longer to reach the equilibrium. Okay. Example is given like wax, which is having very low thermal conductivity. In order to predict cooling process or to stimulate temperature field, the thermal diffusivity must be known. It is requisite for solving the Fourier's differential equation for unsteady state in conduction. Let us uh, look into some uh, numericals, basic numerical. The thermal diffusivity alpha is the controlling transport property for a transient conduction using appropriate value of K, rho, and Cp from the appendix or the table. The thermomechanical physical property of research center. At, it, it, this is actually taken from a class note. You can look into this, the link given in the Padu University. This, this even it is available in the Google also. You can just get it from any source, any uh, any heat transfer book also. So he has it is asked to calculate thermal diffusivity of pure aluminum, silicon carbide, and paraffin. Now various parameters for given pure aluminum, rho, CPK given. So you can see that alpha is. 97.1 to minus 6. Similarly, uh, pure aluminum at 700 Kelvin, it is at, it determined at 300 Kelvin. So pure aluminum at 700 Kelvin, again, it is determined 76 to minus 6. So actually, as the temperature decreases, increases, thermal conductivity relatively decreases. For silicon carbide at 1000 Kelvin, it is 23 to 10 to minus 6. And Paraffin, it is 9.2 into minus 10 to the 8. So you can see that uh, paraffin having very uh, high thermal conductivity compared to the silicon carbide and aluminum. Okay, sorry, low thermal conductivity compared to the silicon carbide and aluminum. Now, general heat conduction equation, we are going to discuss uh, heat transfer problem uh, in one dimension, two dimension, and three dimension. We can derive it, but we are going to confine our talk mainly on 1D heat transfer because uh, it is easy to determine 
one day heat transfer and it is good for, I mean, it, you can easily solve the numericals. The moment you go 2D and 3 dimensional heat transfer equation, it is become too complicated and uh, solving this equation takes longer times. So uh, temperature varies along all the three primary direction and we are going to look into the three different coordinate system that is the rectangular or Cartesian coordinate x, y, z. Then there is a cylindrical coordinate given by r, pi and z and finally spherical or polar coordinate given by r, pi and theta. I think all of you know this thing, the, the different coordinate systems, but uh, what happens so mainly we confine our talk in the Cartesian coordinate. And if you need to know the cylindrical and spherical coordinate, you can easily look into any book, uh, the reference books I have provided. But again, uh, I think do, later to better to do in the rectangular coordinates. So uh, we are going to consider a small uh, rectangular element I have given here, right? Uh, of length is given dx dy, uh, length dx with dy and height dz, and an infinitesimal is a small control volume dy dx dz. That is the volume is dx dy dz. Temperature distribution at that particular point is given x y z or t. If you don't have any motions, there are no change in mechanical energy, no works being done of the system. Only thermal energy need to be considered. Specifically, if there is a temperature gradient, then heat will conduct from high to low temperature. And the conduction heat transfer perpendicular each of the control surface x, y, z are indicated by the heat flux qx, qy, and qz. So, what happens if there is a heat conduction heat in the x direction, x, which is a small increment of dx? You can see here it is x direction, actually, you can see qx, and then it is moving. It will be decrease, increase in the length dx. So, it is being transformed from this direction to this direction. So, qx plus dx will be qx plus. The differential change in the heat, heat flux. That is del qx dx dx. Right? Similarly, qy plus dy equal to qy plus del qy del y into dy and qz plus dz equal to qz plus del qz del z dz. Now, within this small volume, uh, uh, energy source steam term associated with the rate of thermal energy generation. The term is actually represented by Q dx dy gz, where Q is the rate at which energy is generated per unit volume or tungsten per meter cube. And uh, if you, it happens that internal thermal energy stored by the material in the control volume is very small, then we can actually easily con apply the conservation of energy equation that is rate of heat conduction input minus rate of heat conduction output that is given rate of heat conduction at x, y, z because heat is it heat. It input is the EV surface, right? You can see the arrow is given, right? Arrow is given. All the arrows are given, and then the outside, the input are in the inside arrow and the outside arrow actually suggest heat input and heat output is to Okay. So that is why E in is the heat, heat input. This is heat output, and this is the rate of heat generation inside the element, which will be the rate of change of the energy content of the element total. So heat of heat in heat input E in, rate of heat output minus E out. And rate of heat generation is so you put the value. I have already given rate of heat energy is Q dy dy dz, and you put all the value. And rate of change of heat is actually rho Cp del T by dt dx dy dz. Okay, so if you just rearrange this time, it becomes like this because all the time gets cancelled. You can see it, and all the time gets cancelled. The conduction heat transfer is an isotopic material, maybe related from Fourier's law. Okay. Now, the Fourier's law can be applied for three different, uh, uh, I mean, <coughs> Qx can be minus T. You can write down uh, Qx equal to minus A, A dy dz del to dx. Right? Similarly, Qy, because only the heat transfer happening in the y direction in case of Qy, in x direction for Qx and Qz equal to z direction. Right? The isotropic material, they have the same property in all the direction of the thermal conductivity material to be independent of the direction. So, this isothermal property, you can generalize these equations. And what happens? The expressions become like this. This expression become like this. You actually divide it by dx, dy, gz, both sides. Rho Cp dt is given like this. And then if you divide it by dx, dy, gz, so what happens? Because now, as you can see, this is if you divide it by dx dy gz, del, del x dx will get cancelled, right? So del q by del x is given, del q by del x, but the q is actually k dy by dz. So that 
you can write down that q by del t del z right you just substitute that term okay you, you, this equation and all the three equation are actually rearranged you can do it by home and it's become like this okay so these three terms actually no transfer of thermal energy into the control by input or output this is the thermal energy generation and this is the change in the thermal energy storage and in the case of constant thermal conductivity q is constant then this equation become del square t del x2 del 2t del y2 del 2t del z2 g0 by k 1 by alpha del 2 by del because now we have given alpha is actually k by rho cp right so you actually given you divide divided by by k so it will become g0 by k and alpha is become rho cp by k that is 1 by alpha okay this is actually known as fourier's wired equation and reduces to three form under specific condition so this expression actually we consider this one the number 3 if there is no heat generation that is called laplace equation that is del t2 del 2 by del x2 del t2 by del y2 plus del t2 by del z2 zero no heat generation means these two term get cancelled right. and if it is steady state but heat generation is there then this equation will become like this but the g by k term will be there and if it is transient no heat generation so this term will get cancelled but this term will remain okay So these three equations are very useful. You should remember these three equations. One is Laplace equation and this Poisson equation. Another is the diffusion equation for the transient heat conduction. Uh, <coughs> Let's look into the you know, cylindrical coordinates. So the uh, the Cartesian coordinate actually, which has been given here, is converted into cylindrical coordinate. Okay, everything is even same. Only the x being transferred by r cos phi. Y being transferred by R sine phi and Z given Z. Okay, that's why it's cylindrical coordinate is. So Q is heat flux become minus K del T is given by minus K I del T by del R plus J one by R del T by del phi plus K del T by Z. All the terms are given. And if you do all the calculation, you can do in any. I have not derived it because it is too complicated to convert some. This final term you can see here. One by R del by del R K R del T by R one by R square del by del phi, K R del T by del phi plus del by dz, K del T by dz plus z, rho c by c. All the this term even same only this coordinates change because of the cylindrical coordinates. Similarly, polar coordinate it's actually uh, the x y z being transfer r phi and theta. Okay, and the expression is like this because the x become r cos phi sine theta, y become r sine phi cos theta sine theta. And uh, it becomes cos theta. The differential control volume becomes dr r sine phi d phi into r d theta for conduction and resistance spherical volume. And all the after lengthy manipulation, you get this equation. Okay, just for your knowledge, you can Google it. Uh, you can get it from the reference book also. You don't need to remember these equations. 